Hello, my name's Stuart. I'm back with another race on my Golden Middle Distance Races YouTube channel. And I've been looking forward to doing this one. It's the 1984 1500 meter final in Los Angeles. So <clears throat> just a bit of background before we get going with this race. Sebco uh, came into the race as a champion, 1980. He had a spectacular year in 1981. And there was every reason to believe that, I mean, with the age that he was at, which I think was 25, roughly, that he would have two more spectacular years before 1984, 82 and 83. Had he managed to avoid illness, <laughs> uh, I would think that the whole history of middle distance running would would have been different to what it is now. I would have expected to see him um, run around 141 for 800 meters. I would have expected to see him finally get good pacing in a 1500 in mile and absolutely shatter the record to bring the 1500 under under 330 and run around sort of 345, 346-ish for the mile. But sadly, it didn't happen. He had, uh, he had issues, his form was patchy and uh, I believe he had toxoplasmosis, which is an illness picked up from cat feces of all things. So um, it looks like a cat cost us two really spectacular years for Sebco. And um, I think the really low point, well, there were several low points. Uh, I'll, I'll be covering them in various races. One was the 800 meter silver medal he got. And the other one, I suppose, was 83. He ran one or two good races, but he was nowhere near his best form, losing to Steve Scott, who was in the best year of his career. Very depressing. Um, Steve Ovet didn't really have much of a better time either. He also had a spectacular year in 1981, uh, taking the mile record um, and running some superb races, fabulous times and everything, winning the World Cup as Co did as well. Unfortunately, because he ran into a church railing and uh, caused tremendous damage to his leg. Uh, really, he was never the same athlete, even though he broke the world record in, in 1983. He was never really the same confident racer that he had been, the masterful tactician that we'd seen in 78, 77, 78, 79, and 1980. Very disappointing, but, you know, that's the way it goes. To think that both our top legendary athletes really were knocked out for two of their prime years it was absolutely um, devastating really terrible um, but of course Steve, Cam Steve Cram was coming through he won the European gold in 1982 he won the world championship in 1983 so you know we had somebody from Britain to take over from Cohen Ovet but I still maintain that had Cohen Ovet both been fit in 82 and 83 Cram wouldn't have won any golds at all some people disagree with that. I think that Kohanovet in their increasingly top form, you know, would have just completely eclipsed him. Uh, we'd be looking at an 85 cram that could, could have stood up to, you know, Kohanovet at their best in between say 81 and 83, had they avoided injury and illness. But uh, that's what happened, unfortunately. And I must admit after 83, I had very poor hopes about Ko ever getting back to his best, let alone, winning the gold medal in 84. Very depressing. So what happened in 84 was that um, Ovet was, incre Ovet was increasingly in, in better form. He'd set the world record in 83. You know, he was looking pretty good. Um, reason, you know, I mean, not, not at his absolute best, but he was at least looking like he could win something. Um, Cram had one or two issues, but he was sort of picking up fitness. Co. Uh, had missed out on selection, losing to Peter Elliott in the trials, disastrously so. He just wasn't in the right form at that time. Thankfully, the selectors stuck. The selectors uh, remained faithful to him, given that he was the champion. And they selected him ahead of Peter Elliott, quite controversially. But anyway, uh, it's a shame they didn't do that in 88, but they probably felt they couldn't. But that, that's another topic. So coming, uh, who, who, what kind of competition did uh, did the the big three have? So we had we had all three in the final. Fabulous to have all three in the final, as we did do in 1980. But Cram was now a top, 
you know, a 1500 meter runner. Who was there to challenge them? Well, there was Steve Scott, who'd run very well in 1983, running uh, under, inside 348 for the mile, beating Co as well. Um, he'd been looking very good in it in 83, got the silver medal behind Steve Cram. Looked very good in the 83 final. Could have won, but didn't quite. Um, Sidney Marie didn't make the trials. He didn't qualify, so he was out. He'd been very promising. There was a Pascal, he was a good runner. And uh, there were some others. It was another boycott of games, but there was nobody really from Eastern Europe, the Soviet bloc, you know, that really could have challenged. I think that Straub wasn't coming back and I can't think of any top runners. Um, what happened to Veskinghager? Somehow he wasn't there in 84, but Coe had a lot of uh, heat on him, mainly from the two Brits and also from Steve Scott and Abascal. Okay, uh, um, let's get going with this race then. I'd like to say that um, Ovet had problems in the 800. Uh, he collapsed at the end. He was having uh, respiratory problems. It was extremely hot and uh, there was smog, I believe, and it affected Ovet badly, worse than the others, tragically, as we will see. Let's get going with this race. So there we see Steve Scott. Um, his wife is in the crowd watching. There's Co. Co came second in the 800, looking like he's in, you know, looking like he was in good form. He ran, I think, 143.6, indicating that, you know, he was capable of running well. He was coming into good form. To run that time, it would have to tell you that Co was in good form. Um, there's Abascal. I don't know this runner. Cram. Um, I think at one time he wasn't going to go, but he was coming into form and he decided to run. Spivey was a good runner. I find it hard to believe that Cram would have run. Oh. Yeah, I don't like it when they do this. Uh, I mean, field events. Um, let's just see if we can... Where are we? Okay, we're going to come forward here. There they are. They're about to go. So, um... Right, I was watching this live after 12 o'clock in Britain in the early hours of the morning. And I'm trying to remember what I was thinking. I was 20 years old. I think when I saw Ko go to the front there, he looked so strong and assertive. I had a suspicion that he was going to win this. He looked very determined. But I knew that Cram... Um, I thought that I thought that Ko's sternest test would come from Cram, actually, rather than Ovet. I think because of the problems that Ovet had had in the 800. I wasn't really expecting much from him. I was expecting him to get into trouble at some point because there were even doubts about whether he was going to run at all. So there they are going through. Um, I mean, obviously, a lot of those runners there, like Straub and 80, would be fearing that if Coe was in good, good form, his finish would be too much for anybody to deal with. Same with Cram, who was capable of going from a long way out and sustaining it all the way to the line. So yeah, I saw Scott go to the front when I was watching it, and I thought to myself, he's looking confident there, he's gone to the front, he wants to make it a mile as true race. I don't think he, there's no way that he wanted it to be a slow race and then a burn up in the last 200 meters because he knew that it's unlikely that he would have been able to beat Ko Kram and Ovet in a sprint finish. He, he might he might have thought he could beat one of them, but I don't think he, he thought he could beat all three of them. Given that they're, you know, the three best finishers um, in a long time. So he really sped the race up. He made sure it was going to be a fastish race. But he was gambling a lot by taking it and you can see that he hasn't been able to open up a gap. 
Yeah, sorry about that. Just a bit of a pause there. Okay, so um, here we are on the uh, third lap, I think this is. And Abascal is. When I saw Abascal go past Steve Scott, I thought to myself, Scott's gamble has failed. If he was in good enough form, there's no way he would have he would have handed the lead over like that. He's struggling here. There's no doubt about that. So Steve Scott's gamble has failed. I knew, I knew that Scott wouldn't be in the first three from here. I also didn't believe that Abascal would be able to handle Co and Cram. So at this point, really, I'm thinking a Brit is going to win it. It's just a case of which one. I was looking forward to seeing three British runners. Now that's the point where Ovet stepped off the track and I thought, oh God, I groaned. I thought, oh no. Because the dream really was to see the three great British milers coming one, two and three in the Olympic final. I was hoping to see that, but sadly it didn't happen. Now when I watched Ko go here, Cram tried to take him over. When I saw Ko hold off Cram here, he looked so strong, I thought, I just knew he was going to win it. I couldn't see I couldn't see Cram going past him. Cram's really struggling here. Ko's looking easy, and Ko just goes goes away from him in the home straight. He's got plenty in reserve. <laughs> Cram's head is rolling. He's all over the place. And there he goes, winning in 332.5. I was... Um, I was delighted to see Co win uh, back in 84 after all he'd been through two wretched years and he shook off illness got back into form and he's got two Olympic 1500 meter gold medals in his bag let's just go back and have a look at some of that last lap again um, from here so Abascal yeah Abascal going past. We're going from 500 meters out here. Let's just review it one more time. There's Cram. Now Cram is not in an absolutely brilliant position. It tells me that he's kind of not in his best form. I would have expected him to be closer to uh, Ko here. Uh, so Ko's in the driving seat really. And I believe that Co ran a very fast last lap, something like 52 seconds, 52.5, which off that pace actually is very impressive. Because off a much slower pace, Cram ran 3.41 in Helsinki, and he also ran about the same time as Co ran on the last lap here, off a slower pace. So Co's run really was very impressive. He goes off, yeah, he's going past him with ease here. Yeah, I mean, Cram is struggling here already, struggling to keep keep up with uh, Ko. Ko just looks over his shoulder, and you can see the way he goes away there. He's at his absolute best. Well, that's it, and he's very angry there. He's looking up the British press box. That he, yeah, he's he's looking up at the British press. And, um, you know, he's putting his nut think, think, because the British press wrote him off and he was, uh, yeah, and he was fuming. He was fuming with them. He wanted to, sh he wanted to assert that he was the best. Cram was well fed up with not winning. I remember he gave a press conference afterwards and he had a hat on with a kind of clapping hands. And he was saying, you know, big, big round of applause for Seb. He wasn't smiling at all. <laughs> he looked, you know, um, I mean, Cram had got to the point where he believed that he, I mean, he wanted to win every single race and, you know, he, uh, he did not like it. And I mean, given the great runner that Cram was, think about this, he only ever won one silver medal <laughs> compared with Co won two golds and two silvers. All Cram's got is a silver medal in the Olympics. Um, I'm sure that he must think about that at times, even though he ended up running faster times than Co. So, and of course, Ovet also was an Olympic champion and Cram never was. Um, I'm sure that Cram would give up his gold medal, 1500 meter gold medal, uh, if he could have uh, an Olympic gold. Oh, of course he would.